Good morning, friends. Let's continue our discussion about design of the LRU cache. And uh, as we discussed in the previous video, uh, that we have to design this LRU cache so, so that the element that hasn't been used for the longest time will be evicted from the cache. And our first approach should be to use linked hash map, which is provided uh, to us in our Java APIs. So the linked hash map, as we have seen uh, that if we use the default constructors, I mean, if I use this normal constructor or with a initial capacity and or the load factors, it will always follow an insertion order, which means that the element which has been inserted first in the map, that would be having the first access. And similarly, uh, when we try to iterate through it, uh, the ones which has been inser inserted first would be iterated in the same order. But if we want to change the insertion order, the default insertion order in linked hash map, based on the access order, which means that uh, whichever uh, element has been accessed uh, recently, that would be having the higher priority when we are trying to iterate through it. So for that, we have to use this constructor in which we can specify the third parameter as access order. So if I go through the, uh, go through the uh, expression of it, that for the access order, the ordering mode is true. When I mark it as true, then it will be following the access order and if I mark it as false, then it will take the default insertion order. So for the design of the LRU cache, we have to use true for the access order because we have to remove automatically remove the elements which has been uh, least recently used. That is the evaluation algorithm. So I have got this very basic interface, uh, which is my custom hash table, which has got a generic type of key and the value. Uh, so it's very much similar uh, that we want to get uh, the value of using the key, then the put to put in the, in the with the corresponding key and the value and remove a key. Very basic uh, generic operations for a, for any type of cache. So I've just created this. Now using the first approach, we will using the linked hash map. So I have created this LRU cache using linked hash map and I've implemented this interface, which means that I have to implement uh, those three methods, get, put and remove. Here inside this, as mentioned, that I would be using linked hash map called as LRU cache. Okay, so this is the most important method that we have to take care of, which will be uh, used for our eviction algorithm. So once we create our LRU cache with a given capacity, so first of all, I will uh, call this constructor as we just discussed, we will call this constructor with the uh, initial capacity, uh, load factor and access order as true, right? If you mark it as false, then it would be insertion order, not the access order. So let me go back to the yeah, to our program. So in our constructor, when I give the given capacity, what I will do is that, uh, what I have done is that uh, it's the capacity is given whatever we have provided in the constructor. Maybe you can also create a, like a precondition here that if the capacity is uh, less than one or two, whatever, uh, then it, it throws an exception. So just so you can add it. Uh, and ideally, it's a very, a very good practice that we should always do the preconditions for the arguments which are being passed. It doesn't make any sense that if the R capacity is like uh, less than uh, one or two, whatever it can, can mean. Uh, so we can do this uh, preconditions. So nevertheless, uh, let's go with the example, uh, example here, uh, implementation here. So the capacity we call this the load factor I have taken as one. I have chosen it one, which uh, if we mark it as uh, say 0 0.75, which is the default one. So what it means is that suppose if the uh, linked hash map, the capacity is like 16 that we have given and the load factor is say 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 is 75% of 16 is 12. So in that case, whenever the uh, our linked hash map has the element number of elements uh, around at, at, at when it reaches 12, in that case, it will automatically resize it. Resizing is a, is a costly operation because it will rehash everything and then put it back. Uh, so that's why uh, when, when the element reaches 12, 75% of the total capacity of 16, in that case, it will be resized, which means that uh, the capacity would be increased, uh, I think, to the two times. Uh, by default, there is some uh, uh, that how much time it, it should be uh, incremented. So I think by default, it's 1.75 or 2. So it means that the capacity would be increased from 16 to 32. Uh, and similarly, whenever uh, we reach 75% of 32, it will be again resized. So this is the meaning of load factor. So I have it as 1, which means that only when the capacity reaches the exact uh, capacity that we have passed here, only then. Uh, we are going to resize it. So it's, it's the basic business just to do it randomly as one. 
you can choose uh, the default 0.75 as well. But the main thing to implement is that access order. I have marked it access order as true, which means that it will not follow the insertion order, but the access order. And this is the most important method that we have to uh, keep a note on to implement our, our LRU. Remove the oldest entry. So we have to remove the eldest entry. This is our basic uh, eviction algorithm. We have to remove the eldest entry, which has not been recently accessed. So this, whenever, is, uh, so we have to always return uh, this, rem we have to always uh, remove the eldest entry whenever the size of our hash map is greater than the capacity. So this is my condition. And whenever this meets, this condition meets, the latest, the, the least uh, recently accessed element would be or the remove the eldest entry from our linked hash map. Just using this constructor will do our purpose because it actually defines our uh, policy that how we are going to remove our eldest entry. And so now uh, the get put and the remove methods are quite uh, straightforward. What we are doing is that say for the get method, we only check whether the key is equal to null or not because we don't uh, allow uh, key or the value to be null. If key is null, then it will throw illegal argument exception. The same concept we can use here when we talked about capacity that it's less than uh, less than equal to zero, and it should always throw this exception. And then finally, we'll return this LRU uh, cache dot cat. Similarly, for put, we will check whether the key and the value is null or not, and uh, we will only uh, update it, only put it if the key uh, is is not present. Only if the, the key is absent, then we will use we are using this compound action put if absent. Uh, here to uh, to put uh, a, a key corresponding value. For the remove, it's very much similar to the get, where we'll check the key again, if it's null or not. Uh, otherwise, it will just remove the key. Okay, so this is a very basic, simple implementation of our LRU cache, because we are leveraging on LRU linked hash map from the Java APIs. And this is the main method that we have to uh, take care of, where the access order is true and the remove eldest entry is implemented whenever the size is greater than the capacity. Now, as our implement implementation is done, so we have got this uh, question as an interface that we have to implement, and we have impl implemented our basic LRU cache and all those three methods. Most, most important thing is that we have to always take care of all the unit test cases possible. Ideally, when whatever the code that you're writing, should be having 60 at least 60% 60 of code coverage by using the unit tests. So here, uh, I created a very simple uh, unit test case class. Let's go through it quickly, and then I will run all, all the test cases at once. So first of all, I will, I'm going to use custom hash table, LRU cache, which is my implementation for this interface. So that is our main method. And uh, here, in the setup, I will create an instance of LRU cache using linked hash map with a capacity of 5. You can change the capacity as you want. So here, it will call this uh, linked hash map uh, constructor along with the remove eldest entry. Now, uh, the first uh, three tests are very basic tests where I'm just going to check whether, whether uh, whenever I want to call the get, put, and remove method with a null key. In that case, as we uh, implemented that, whenever uh, the key is null, it will always throw this illegal argument exception for get, put, and remove all of them. So these are the first three test cases. When key is null, then it will throw this exception for put, get, put, and for remove method. It's quite straightforward. Uh, and also when the value is null for put, then in that case also, I, am, uh, I will put, I will uh, throw the exception. This, are the, this is the general paradigm that how do we uh, uh, test it for the exception. So just for example, uh, I will just create a throwable exception and assert throws on this. And uh, this is my uh, lambda where I'm actually calling the remove method on the null key. Uh, and it should, ex uh, we expect that it will assert it will throw uh, an illegal argument exception. And once we catch this exception here, we can we can see the message and we can assert on the message that the key must not be null. This is what we are doing when we are actually seeing this uh, hash map remove method, that key must not be null. And this is our illegal argument exception object, which is being thrown. So this is how we actually test for any exception. I think this is very useful uh, when we are tra uh, trying to use, uh, when you are running your, writing your own unit test cases which expect, uh, expects to get an, any exception. This is, uh, I think, the paradigm that you can use in latest J unit 5. After this, uh, I think this is the main uh, unit test where we are actually going to test uh, the functional behavior of our LRU cache eviction. So suppose, I mean, I'm just going to override it uh, to make it simple. So for example, I LRU, uh, in the setup method, we are using the capacity of 5. Now I reduce the capacity to 2. 
and suppose I put uh, one. So when I put one and two, so cash is like one here. And now the cash is one is equal to one. But being at the head, which means that uh, it is at the, at, the, at, the, at the higher priority. Okay. Now suppose I want to say get one. So get one means that now uh, this access is uh, this. So whenever the cash is having like this time entry, right? It is like one uh, having the key as one and the value as one integer. And similarly, the two uh, as a key, two string as a key and the value as two. Whenever I use get method, which means that now our most recently accessed uh, element is one. So this will having a higher priority because this is the most recently accessed now because I called a get method on this key. So I expect that it should be one. Okay. Now, uh, if I put LRU key, uh, now LRU, in our LRU uh, cache right now, the most access element is one and the least access element is two, although we have only got two elements. Okay. Now, suppose if I, and the capacity is two only. Now, if I add a new element three with the key as string three and value is three. Now, because now our size, now we have got like three elements now, and that is exceeding the capacity. As we have seen that whenever the size is uh, greater than the capacity, then we have to remove the eldest entry. In our simple scenario here, uh, the least recently used element is two. And once we're trying to add three, then we have to evict uh, this two element because it is the uh, eldest entry and we should be removed to make a space for three. So that's where uh, I, when I, whenever I put three here, the capacity reaches two, capacity reaches two here, and the least element entry two has been removed now, which means that our cache will be having entry like this. One is equal to one and three is equal to three. So we can assert it that whenever we try to uh, allow you cache get, 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 it should be returning in null. Okay. Now suppose allow you key has one. And now uh, suppose uh, I want to add one more element, right? Four and four. Now when I, even when I put three here, right? So three actually get, gets the higher priority than one because this is the most recently like used element right now in our cache. So now if I want to also add four, then one as because because uh, in this scenario when we have got one and three three is having the higher priority than one because of the access order because we have recently put it so that actually uh, over exceeds i mean exceeds the priority of one now uh, if i want to add an additional element four again the same will family run because now we have uh, we have to accommodate for three elements which is not possible our capacity is only two so the eldest entry one would be removed because this is the least recently accessed now, once we uh, try to get one, it will be setting in the same as the previous test case. Now, suppose if I uh, now uh, just uh, we can check for the get and uh, uh, other uh, remaining elements. Whenever we try to access get, then it would be having returning me uh, three. So at this point, when we try to get three, three is having a higher priority than four. And when I uh, call LRU cache that got get four, then four will be having a more uh, like a priority than the three now. So the thing is, whenever we are trying to uh, use any type of operation uh, on any type of key in our LRU cache, that based on the access order, it will be having higher priority than the other one. So this is the very, very generic test cases. I think it serves, serves our purpose to understand that how this cache is implemented. Now let's quickly run, through, uh, run all these test cases at once and uh, to confirm that our understanding is correct. So let me run this. You can also use Control Shift F10 uh, for a short file a shorter key. So once we run this, all our test cases are correct. Okay. So this was all about our uh, basic uh, LRU cache implementation, leveraging on uh, the uh, the link hash map provided to us in Java API. In the next video, we'll do the follow up uh, that we will design our LRU cache which uses classic data structures and is also thread safe. What it means is that we'll be using the simple linked list and hash map. In the linked, list, linked hash map in Java also, it uses two data structures, doubly linked list and a hash map to implement our linked hash map uh, structure. So, I mean, now uh, in the, in the follow-up example, we will uh, write our own linked list and our own uh, type of hash map, or we can use concurrent hash map uh, from Java uh, to design the same LRU cache. So see you all in the next video.